Is time an illusion? Do we perceive temporal phenomena objectively? Man obviously devised language to make communication easier. One of the most mysterious phenomena we have labelled time. We hardly ever talk about this subject because most people are easily scared by mysteries and would rather say they haven't got the time or even time is money. Man is trapped in a four-dimensional reality. We automatically perceive three dimensions in space, the fourth dimension we call time. Now, arrogantly, I think we automatically assume that this is the only way that the universe can be perceived, i.e. the future does not yet exist, the past no longer exists, but the present is just the dividing line between the two. This dividing line cannot exist independently from the other two. According to this logic, nothing exists, which is evidently not true. So how does the fourth dimension relate to the other three? I think that for each dimensional level in space-time, there exist corresponding levels in nature. Obviously, the higher levels perceive the universe more objectively than the lower ones. The lowest level, I think, is empty space, which I've represented here by a dimensionless point. No length, breadth or height. For us, this point cannot physically exist, as we consider everything to have three dimensions. Empty space, for me, represents a dimensional no-go land, devoid of all things. Not even a thought about the lack of things would be conceivable here. Now, if we jump up a dimension, this dimensionless point will similarly transform. Imagine a continuous stream of points arranged next to each other. An infinite number of points creates a line, which is the first dimension in space. In nature, I think this correlates to the mineral world. Physical existence, but no other attributes. This is clearly a dimensional leap above empty space, and this level came into being in our universe during the infamous Big Bang. Within this level, there exists a huge range of varying complexity, but all that exists in the mineral world exhibit the same attributes when it comes to the questions of perceptions. I doubt very much that any rock, no matter how complex, actually perceives anything at all, simply as it is inanimate and therefore non-living. The second dimension in space is a surface or plane. In the same way that a line is made up of an infinite number of points, a surface is made up of an infinite number of lines, arranged in parallel with each other. One very important point is that the direction of the second dimension in relation to the first is that it runs at 90 degrees to it. The importance of this angular change in direction will become more apparent as we move up the hierarchy towards more familiar territory. Another important pattern is that an infinite number of parts becomes a unit when viewed from the dimension above. In this model, the plant kingdom correlates to the second dimension in space. Even the simplest life form is clearly a dimensional leap above the mineral world. One of the simplest forms of life are viruses, partly due to the fact that they can become completely inert if the circumstances permit. If certain elements are missing, some viruses cease to function and technically become non-living. Once the missing element is reintroduced, then the virus springs back to life. There is a tremendous debate between scientists about this question. According to Neil Campbell in his book entitled Biology, he says, probably the safest answer is that viruses have both living and non-living characteristics. So even viruses are borderline cases when it comes down to defining life. The very fact that they can reproduce themselves, to me, puts them a dimensional leap above anything any mineral can do. Therefore, the world of vegetable life relates to the second dimension of space. I consider the simplest of unicellular organisms right through to the most complex orchids and carnivorous plants to be on the same level of perception. The third dimension in space is a solid. In the same way that a surface is made up of an infinite number of one-dimensional lines, a solid is made up of an infinite number of two-dimensional surfaces stacked next to each other. Again, the direction of the third dimension in relation to the second is that it runs at 90 degrees to it. 
Before we forget, this three-dimensional solid exists in space only and not in time. This is a crucial point, as we easily forget that we automatically perceive events that occur in time. In a way, the third dimension is a snapshot of a solid object existing out of time. All animal life exhibits some sort of awareness. This is a dimensional leap above the vegetable world in terms of perceptive power. Obviously, there is a big difference in awareness, say, between a hydra and a hyena, but this is irrelevant. Animals have no perception of time as they are not conscious of their own existence. Therefore, they correspond to a three-dimensional level of perception. For things to exist within our world, they need to be travelling in the fourth dimension, i.e. an infinite number of three-dimensional objects stacked next to each other. The direction of the fourth dimension in relation to the third is that it runs at 90 degrees to it. This may take some time to sink in, but time is a higher dimension of space. Our notion that time is clearly different from the three dimension of space is an illusion caused by our limited perceptive capabilities. Human consciousness is undoubtedly a dimensional leap above that of animals. Although it has recently been proven that animals such as parrots and chimpanzees are far more developed than previously thought, they cannot be said to have reached a level anywhere near that of mankind. It's been due to human contact and teaching in the first place that these animals have thus developed. The fact is that left to nature, at least for the time being, all animals are aware but they are not conscious of their existence and of the world around them. How did human consciousness come about? I think it was due to a dimensional leap in awareness which took place very recently on a geological time scale. The story of the Garden of Eden where the first humans fell after eating forbidden fruit from the tree of knowledge of good and evil at first glance doesn't look to be overflowing with scientific fact. However, coupled with recent findings in the chemistry of certain hallucinogenic plants and brain development, I am convinced that the answer to this mystery lies here. I will develop this and other ideas in part two.